let's look at another inverter design. In this design we're going to use a depletion load and this is the preferred design and you'll see why just in a minute. So it's still an NMOS process, so there's two NMOS devices, but in this example here, the load device has been replaced with a depletion load, and you can see the little line along here that tells us it's a depletion device. So if we were to work through the transistor equations for this, I'll just talk through them quickly just now. We're going to have the same gate and the drain and the source, the gate, the drain and the source. And again, you can check that for yourself. Think about what the current carriers are and where they're coming from. Now, the depletion load, this device here, the VGS is going to be zero because the gate and the source are, are at the same voltage. So that's going to be zero. The V drain source is going to be five minus the output V out. The threshold voltage in this instance here is going to be minus four. So we've got the VGS minus VT is going to equal the zero minus minus four, which is plus four. So we can check the cutoff linear and saturation. So it's going to be cut off if the VGS minus VT is less than or equal to zero. So four is not less than or equal to zero. So this device is never cut off. So if we work through the other two, it's going to be in the linear region if VGS minus VT is greater than or equal to VDS, which is the 5 minus V0. So if we were to transpose this equation, we would have it's in the linear region if the output voltage rises up to 1 volt. And if we could do the same for the saturation, and it's in saturation if the output voltage is less than or equal to 1 volt. So it means that in this device here, the Volt, the current is going to flow down through this device and now let's say for instance with this device initially is off then the current will flow down through this device down through the output and let's say they've got a capacitive load and output the voltage here will, will rise up so it will rise up and using the uh, saturation current at first until it hits one volt and then above one volt it will rise all the way up to the five volts here using the linear region of the, the graph. So we'll, we'll see that just in a minute when we look at it in the simulation tool. So the second part here is the drive part. Now it's exactly the same as the previous one. We haven't changed any of that, so I'm not going to talk over that again. You can always check the last video, but that's just exactly the same. So let's see how the device is actually going to work. Let's say, for example, we have a, a low voltage here at the input. So if we have a low voltage at the input here, it means that this device here is switched off because we've got Vn is going to be less than or equal to 1. Okay, so it means we've got a low voltage here. This device is off. If this device is off, then in effect, we just have an open circuit here. And we're only interested in what happens with this device. And as we've just said there, just now in this device, it's going to charge up the output here using a saturation current up to one volt and then it's going to charge all the way up to five volts in the linear region. So you can see right away that using a depletion load is much better than using the, the um, enhancement load because the output is going to go all the way up to five volts as opposed to the enhancement load, which will only go up to 4 volts. So let's see this actually going up to 5 volts in the simulation tool. So if you go to the resources section, click on the link and open up the simulation tool. Now what we want to do is we want to ensure that the device that we're using is the NMOS depletion. So that's the NMOS depletion and it's got a threshold voltage of minus 4. So set that VT to minus 4 and you can see that we've got a depletion device here. Now we want to set up the voltages. So in the voltages, let's say we're going to start off with the drain here is going to be sitting at five volts. So that's okay, the drain's sitting at five volts just now. And we'll start off with the gate sitting at zero volts. But of course, the gate is connected to the source. 
So whenever the gate is 0 volts, the source will be 0 volts as well. So we start off in this position here. And as we've said, in this position, it's a saturation current. So we're actually drawing a saturation current down through the device. And in effect, this is, this is the, the load device. That's the one at the, at, at the top. And if there, it's drawing a current down through this device, it will go to the output and it will charge up, say, a capacitor. And as it charges up that capacitor, the voltage here on this source side is going to start rising up. But as we said, it's going to rise up to 1 volt in saturation current. So let's put this up to 1 volt. So that value there is going to rise up to 1 volt. But remember, as that rises up to 1 volt, the gate and the source are both connected together. So this gate is going to rise up to 1 volt as well. And you can see at that point there, we're actually at the curve here, just be between the saturation and the linear. So it's just jumping into the linear region as we would expect. So now let's say the source now increases in voltage. Let's say it goes up to three volts. So now it's at three volts, but as the source is at three volts, the gate's also at three volts. And you can see that we're going to be remaining in this linear region and we're going to continue to charge up this side here. So it means that this side here is going to go all the way up to 5 volts. So let's put it up to 5 volts and see what happens. So we're up at 5 volts, but the gate is also at 5 volts. And that's the crucial thing. The gate is at 5 volts. So it means that we're still in the linear region and we're still drawing current. So this device remains on and it's drawing current and it goes all the way up to 5 volts. So this is the advantage of using this depletion load. It's that the high voltage is actually the full 5 volts, as opposed to the enhancement load where the, the, the high voltage is only the 4 volts. So let's go ahead and we'll see what happens whenever we put a high input in and see what the, uh, the output is going to look like. So let's now assume that we have got a high voltage at the input here. So a high voltage we know is going to be 5 volts. So it means that this device here is going to be on. Now we know that this device is always on because this 4 is never less than or equal to 0. So that means that both of these devices are on. So again, what we can do is we can check out the current that's flowing in this device. And we can check out the current that's going flowing in this device. And we can equate both of those currents. We can put the values for our high voltage in which is going to be 5 volts and we can put a, va a value in for our low voltage which will be 0.5 volts and we can find out what the width to length ratio has to be in order to ensure that we actually get those voltage levels just the same as we did in the previous one so if you note here whenever this output is low it's 0.5 volts so it means that this load device in that instance the load device here, the Vout is less than or equal to 1, so the Vout is 0 0.5. So this current here, through this device here, the load device, is the saturation current. Now in the drive transistor, we've got the equation down here, we've got the Vin is 5 volts, so 5 minus 1 is 4. So 4 is greater than or equal to at the Vout, which is 0 0.5. So 4 is greater than 0 0.5, so it's actually in the linear region. So what we can do is we can work out the current here with the saturation current for this device and we can work out the linear current for this device and we're going to go and equate them the same way we did in the previous video. So let's go and we'll do that now. So with a high voltage at the input of 5 volts and a low voltage on the output of 0.5 volts then the top transistor which is our depletion load is running with a saturation current so this is a saturation current equation here if you check this up from the previous videos that we've done so it's going to be beta n up into vgs minus vt squared now the vgs minus vt for this depletion load is a value of four volts so that's going to be four squared so we're going to have the beta n upon two times the four squared which will give us the value of eight beta n. 
Now we don't need to bother about keeping the N here. We'll just change this to 8 beta L because it's going to be the load resistor. And whenever we look at the actual uh, ratios between he these, then the mu N C talks for the load and the mu N C talks for the drive are going to divide out and disappear. So we can just forget about the, the mu N C toxies. So we're just left with the 8 beta L. Now for the other device, it's going to be running in a linear region. So this is the linear current of the enhancement drive device. So this is the linear current equation here. You can check this up again from the previous videos. So in this case, our VGS minus VT is going to be the 5 minus the 1. And the VDS is going to be the output voltage of 0 0.5. And that's VDS squared, which is 0 0.5. And there should be a squared term just sitting in here. I'll just pop that in here just now. So that's squared. And this is approximately equal to 2 times the beta N. So we'll just replace that and we'll just write it as 2 beta drive. So it means that we can equate these two current equations. So the two equations we're equating is the 8 beta L and the 2 beta D. So we've got 8 beta L equals 2 beta D. So that means that the width to length ratio for the drive transistor it's going to be greater than or equal to four times the width of the length ratio for the load transistor. We just divided out here. Okay, so if we ensure that these device sizes are correct, then we're going to get the full, the, the correct um, output. So there's an advantage of using this depletion load. So the advantage of it is that we when we put a, a low voltage in 0.5 volts we get a high voltage of 5 volts at the output and that's the major advantage of using this depletion load and that's why this depletion load would be the preferred method of producing this inverter so that's all for this video i'll get you on the next video goodbye